Welcome to another edition of the Successful Encore Career, being brought to you by Central Ohio Area Agency on Aging, Nationwide Insurance, Innosource, and our special episode sponsor, The Resume Coach. I'm Brett Johnson, longtime volunteer with Employment for Seniors, and with me as always is Executive Director Carol Ventresca. We're talking about resumes. Resumes, resumes. They are the hardest thing for us to deal with in our job search. So we wanted to do something special for our listeners. We've created a series of podcasts. We're going to talk about why resumes are important in your job search, what should be included and not included on a resume, and talk about accomplishment statements, which are so important in creating your resume. We have a special guest today, Sharon Hammersley. Sharon is the principal coach for The Resume Coach where you help job seekers conduct 21st century job searches. So Sharon, welcome with us today. Thanks, Carol, and thanks, Brett. I'm so pleased to be on this program today, and I certainly hope that the tips that I give our listeners are helpful to them in their job search. This is going to be a great program, and I know you're going to give our listeners a lot of information. Let me also mention that Sharon has been a longtime supporter and volunteer for Employment for Seniors, as well as the Career Transition Institute here in Central Ohio. She also facilitates all of the Employment for Seniors career search workshop. So here's somebody we've got with us today who knows what she's talking about in terms of resumes. So today's podcast is going to include the purpose of a resume, formatting resumes, and the importance of the appearance of a resume, and lots of important tips. So let's go ahead and get started. Sharon, as I said, resumes are the hardest thing for us to deal with. And I had a question today that I thought was um, very thought-provoking for me in terms of it's, you know, I sort of easily like, oh, just start talking about resumes and on and on and on. But the question is, why do I have to do a resume if every employer asks me to do an online application? So why am I bothering? But that's actually a great question, Carol, because, yeah, you're right. Um, Employers do ask you to fill out an application, but guess what? That application looks exactly like everybody else's application. So the purpose of a resume actually is to help you be you in the job search. Good point. So Mm -hmm. so, um, it's actually your primary marketing tool. And I like to think of it as what I call a help offered ad. Um, Employers put out a help wanted ad. And what most people do is they throw a resume at it. Um, A thoughtful applicant will take a good look at that um, help wanted ad, and what they will do with their resume is they will craft a help offered ad. That is, they will try to speak as best they can directly to the need that that employer has and how they are really the best candidate to fill that need for them. Um, What are your unique qualifiers what are your, what is your value to that employer? So if you think of it as making, putting the you in unique or the unique in you, that's really the purpose of the resume. That's the one thing I think that, um, particularly for our mature job seekers, when we talk about resumes, because they so often just have a list of tasks. And if we talk to them about it being a marketing tool and sort of sound bites about them, it's, they start, it starts, uh, you could kind of see the light bulb go off. They're starting to see how they can make this about them as opposed to just general information. That's correct. And actually, we are going to have a whole podcast that's going to be on accomplishments. And that is the meat of how you present these qualifications and how you create a unique picture of who you are and what you offer. Great. Good. Okay. I think formats of resumes are difficult in the least. And they've changed a lot as well, too. And I think it all can depend on what job you're applying for and such, too. But it does break down to a, a two or three 
types of formats, correct? That is correct. Um, the two formats um, that we talk about are the functional format and what I'm going to call the combination format, and I'll explain that in a minute. Um, the functional resume is great for anybody who is seeking to go in a different direction. And that's probably a lot of people in our audience. They've done something for 15, 20, maybe even more years, but they're looking to move into a new field, not necessarily what they've been doing, but there are um, a lot of similarities in the skills and experiences that they bring to their intended new field. So a functional resume uh, presents key skills and qualifications that have been gained throughout your work history. So let's say that you're looking to move to a nonprofit function, um, but you've been in sales. Now, people might say, well, don't see a connection there. Um, there's a lot of connection there in that Sales involves engaging people, um, convincing them to support you, um, all kinds of different things. And in a functional resume, you break all of those skills out and present them from your past experience and show how that is going to make a um, an impact for that new employer. And actually, Carol, that brings up a... a a point, uh, don't we have a podcast on transferable skills? Right. Absolutely. I was just thinking that too. And, um, it, it, this also goes to the question of a resume needs some thought put into it. And functional resumes really need thought put into it. You can't just throw it together. You have to have some direction, maybe some help. It's hard to do it by yourself. And you have to have a really good command of your skills and the, um, functional areas that you can claim to be um, in your bailiwick so that you can put together a good functional resume. Yes, that's true. And de and definitely, uh, we do have great two great podcasts on transferable skills. Excellent. So then the second format, and this is one that you'll more commonly see out there, is something that I call the combination resume. And that actually has many elements of what we call the, used to call the chronological resume. That's the one that started with objective, experience, and um, it looked very similar. What, when you, uh, this resume format really focuses in on what you offer the employer. It is actually, it really is a marketing document. So in, in the, in this format, you start with a short summary. And what you really need to include in that summary is look at what the employer is asking for and make sure you include those key words. Okay. A key word is simply something that you see repeatedly in employer ads for the type of position that you're looking for. So make sure that when you create your, your, what I call basic resume, that you include those keywords. You can always tweak when you're actually submitting your application. So you always want to start out with a summary and you want to include those keywords. Then you do want to present your work history and then education, volunteer activities, those types of things. But it always starts with a summary, and then the second key piece is your employment history. Right. So. Sharon, if somebody asks you, well, which type should I have, a functional or a combination, there are times when my feeling is that an, a, a job seeker may need both. I think that's true. Um, for a functional resume, what I tell people that I work with is that that resume needs to always go to a living, breathing human being in the company that you want to work for because it doesn't really work very well in the standard web application format. But yeah, um, I think that there are distinct advantages to having both. And the more you work on this, the better you'll know yourself and the more confident you'll be on down the road when you get to that interview stage. That, that's really true. And I think that's one of the messages that we want to have in all of our uh, different podcasts for this development of resumes is 
doing these steps, putting a little bit of effort into the resume is not only going to make you a better job seeker, it's going to make you a much better interviewee. You're going to really be able to talk to an employer about what you can do because you have a good firm understanding by having developed a good resume. Um, but let me also just step back one more second regarding both formats. Is it safe to say that if you're doing a resume, you have to have at least the combination and the functional is a potential second? That would be the most obvious path to take, okay. I think. Yes. Okay, great. Yes. Good. Okay. Well, the next big question I always hear from clients, even before they've put the first word on paper, is, well, how long does it have to be? And that is a really good and somewhat <laughs> tricky question because the answer is it depends. depends. <laughs> it depends. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. So um, many resumes will be two pages long. You may have heard the statement out there, oh, your resume can never be more than one page long. Well, you could try to cram all of your information in one page, but that's probably not a good strategy. So a two-page resume is for a job seeker who is is currently looking for a position that's at or above what they are currently working at or their most recent position. And this is especially true if you have, I would say, any more than 10 years of experience. Because, sure, straight out of college, you might have that one-page resume, but... Um, for most job seekers, to try to cram enough information into a single page either means that you're going to miss a lot of stuff or the font is going to be so small that nobody can read it. Right, so, right. So, so that, that's it. Now, can, can, can I ask too, um, is it still common thought that when an employer is reading a resume, number one, they don't go through the whole thing first. They're going to give you seven seconds. So, of everything on this on the resume, the most important part is the first third of the first page. Yes. That's summary section. Also, even in the second round of reading it, they may not get to the second page. So what regardless of one page or two, the most important stuff is still that first page. The most important stuff is always page one and and in fact that top of the fold, as we call it, right. top third of the page. Right. That that absolutely has to pretty much hit an employer between the eyes or they're not going to move on. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, the one-page resume, um, yeah, new college grads, but also if you are really at a stage in your life where you want to take a pretty big step back and you don't want the level of responsibility that you've had. And basically, you're just looking for work that's fulfilling, but it doesn't take up your entire day. Um, you can carefully pare your resume back to one page and just present key elements of your experience that again, relate to the type of work that you want to do, which may just be maybe you've been a pretty high-level sales manager. And now you just like to spend 15, 20 hours a week um, answering customer calls or something right. like that. Right. There's a lot of experience there, but um, the employer doesn't want to see somebody that they would think would be overqualified. So you need to uh, just present the most key elements of that experience and then, you know, you can explain to the ex- employer in your cover letter, which we actually aren't going to talk about at the moment, but you can explain to them that it is you've made the decision to step back and therefore you're looking for a position at this level of responsibility. And, and you know, that a lot of um, clients will say things like, oh, I'm not going to dumb down my resume. Going to a one-page resume isn't dumbing it down. It's just that you are focusing on the job. Yes. And if the job is a much lower position than what you have had before, that's okay. If that's what you're looking to, ful- to that will fulfill you in your next employment opportunity. So what you're trying to do is more focus in on just the absolute information that that employer needs, not the breadth and scope of your previous positions. That's correct. I wouldn't call it dumbing down. I would actually call it distilling down. There you go. That's good. That's good. Thank you. So how important is the appearance of the resume you're creating? I would say that if a person is actually presenting you a resume, 
um, and it's an in-person interview, it's your number one make or break factor. If your resume does not look neat, um, if it has typos or any number of things, you know, it's, it's just, that's a turnoff. You know, you're not going to get very far with that. So I'd like to just make a couple of suggestions about appearance. Um, your typeface, it has to be large enough to read. So it's, it's, it's just, um, but it can't be fancy. I've occasionally come across resumes where people have, the whole resume is written in script. I'm going, um, this is hard to read. Or all caps. Yeah, or all caps. You can't tell what starts and what stops. Yeah, know? right. Yeah. Or, you know, lots of bolding and underlining and, and this and that. No, it has to be, you want, you, you do need to maybe bold some stuff. You might occasionally need to use some underlining, some italics, but all of that has to be very judicious. So, um, so then the second part of this, and this kind of goes back into, well, how long should my resume be? That whole white space issue. And it's kind of like Goldilocks. We know when it's too hot or too cold, you know, um, too, you know, if, if everything's crammed in, you know, it's, it's not legible. If, if you have a lot of white space, suddenly it looks a little skinny there. Like maybe you're not really qualified for that mm -hmm. position. Right. So you, you need to get that balance. What I usually recommend is something along the lines of standard margins, which is, I think, one inch. And you may have to play with those a little bit to get everything to fit right on the page. But generally speaking, standard margins, um, whatever Word or Google Docs sets up as the standard distance between lines is good. Don't try to cram stuff in, but don't also space it out a lot. Um, now, here's another thing that I get a lot of questions about. Should I use graphics or do I need borders? And my question, my answer to the person who's asking about graphics is, are you a graphic designer? Because if you're a graphic designer, you better use graphics. Uh, for everybody else, graphics are really not necessary or recommended because actually when you put in a graphic, that's great real estate that could be conveying some other information that you need. Um, the same's true with borders. Borders look really nice. They take up real estate. Mm -hmm. So right. Now sometimes people also ask me a little bit about color on resumes and I say, yeah, a little bit of color might be okay, you know, just to highlight a section, maybe at the top or something like that. But again, you know, um Nothing that's going to distract from the actual content of your resume, what you're trying to present. And going back to the notion of being a graphic artist, if you're not a graphic artist and you can't do color well, it's better to not do any. Exactly. That's right. And then speaking of color, um, you're going to need some paper for hard copies eventually. And what you clearly don't want to do is pink, purple, bright green, or any of, yellow. Those, <laughs> yes. any of those things. Um, there, I think that's a myth that uh, has existed out there for a long time because when you send in a paper copy of your resume in the good old days, um, somebody got the bright idea that if yours was hot pink, maybe it would stand out in that stack. Exactly. <laughs> um, that, that really doesn't work. So what you really need to do is you know to go, you need to go to your, um, local office supplies store and you need to find the little rack of resume paper and it will be white or off white or mm -hmm. cream or one of those colors and it'll have a little heavier texture than what we would normally do. But just plain white paper is absolutely fine. Yes. Yes. So um, I, I would say you, you're going to need to take hard copies to interviews. Um, and I also sometimes get the question, especially for um, job fairs and that type of thing. Well, OK, so I have a two page dress and they should be front to back or stapled. My preference is actually stapled. But the one thing that you have to be very sure is that your contact information is on that second page. Right. Exactly. So. so. 
Great, Sharon. These are wonderful tips. Thank you so much for getting us started on developing resumes. We've got lots more to go, but for this podcast, it was wonderful. Circle270media.com.